Please rise and then remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I, I was thinking about our guests tonight, um, and I was reminded, you know, we, we live in this natural world, and, and we burden ourselves with laws and regulations and final exams. But in 1971, the actor Gene Wilder reminded us of another human invention, imagination. And these are some lyrics from um, Gene Wilder's performance as Willy Wonka. Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. Take a look and you'll see into your imagination. We'll begin with a spin, traveling in the world of my creation. What we'll see will defy explanation. If you want to view paradise, simply look around and view it. Anything you want to, do it. Want to change the world? There's nothing to it. There is no life I know to compare with pure imagination. Living there, you will be free if you truly wish to be. Amen. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mrs. Sanchez this evening is acting uh, city clerk for us, and we will need... Uh, a motion for her to uh, be acting clerk tonight. Well, Your Honor? Yes. I move that we appoint Ramona Sanchez as the acting clerk for tonight's regular meeting. Thank you, sir. Second? Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Scott? Second. Discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. You're going to stay. Okay. For this evening, we have a presentation, and this is a certificate of recognition in the Lampier Drama Club. Yes, Your Honor. Whereas at the core of an effective education system is theater arts moving us to laughter, to tears, to amuse, to entertain, and to enlighten, and whereas theater arts cultivates new generations of artists and lifelong audiences in creating memorable the theatrical productions and experiences, and introduces children of all ages to the skill and enjoyment of drama, music, dancing, singing, and the performing arts. And whereas theater communicates our stories and our cultures from one generation to another through time. And whereas the Lamphere Drama Club's production of Roald Dahl's Willy Wonka transported the audience to a magical chocolate factory with a cast that included 75 Lamphere District Elementary School children playing the role of Oompa Loompas, 45 Lamphere High School student performers, 15 Lamphere High School technical crew members, and an orchestra comprised of 30 students. And whereas over 2,200 people enjoyed the Lamphere Drama Club's five performances, five, five performances of Willy Wonka by the Lamphere Drama Club from April 22nd through the 26th, 2015, which are said to be one of the school's best productions. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of the City of Madison Heights celebrates the achievements, creative exploration, and the imagination of the young artists of the Lamphere Drama Club and thanks Director Judy Lewis and Technical Director Rick Lewis for their hard work and efforts on Lamphere High School's production of Roald Dahl's Willy Wonka. Further, City Council acknowledges the work of everyone involved in this th theater production, including Assistant Director of Talent Maven Tramble, Assistant Director Paige Van Sickle, Costume Director Sue Calvary, as well as the teachers, parents, and community who support them. Is somebody here this evening to accept this? Mr. Would be Mr. and Mrs. Lewis, uh, Marjean? Yeah. Okay.
Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I would like to acknowledge the, some of the people that worked really hard on the production that are here tonight. That is Gail Verbees, <coughs> Cindy Isham, Patty Pitt, um, anybody else? Vicki Van Sickle, whose daughter was assistant director, Paige, and all the people who played a part in, and Hunter's mom too. <laughs> I gotta make sure we get her. Um, but I wanna say what a wonderful production it was and what a memorable event bringing the community together. I'm sorry the Oompa Loompas aren't here tonight, but I think because of the weather, they didn't want to venture out, but there's a lot of them that are now, I think, going into theater arts because of this production. And you have been an example to them as well. So thank you very much. Uh, good, thanks, <clears throat> Your Honor. Anybody else, Mr. Bliss? Uh, yes, Your Honor, I, I just wanted to talk to the students and the parents a little bit. Uh, I'm a former Lanford Drama Club member uh, exactly. Yeah. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> um, I, I love how in this uh, proclamation it says one of the school's best productions because I'm kind of partial to the few that I was in. <laughs> but no, no competition. But I, I will say this: I, I, I think it's it's really it's really exciting because in the last 20 years, so you know, call it from 1995 on, uh, I can only think of three productions, maybe four that involved the district itself. Uh, back in the 90s, uh, they had you know, Wizard of Oz involved uh, younger members of the district. Also, Oliver had auditions across the district. And then, you know, in, in my years, you know, Oklahoma, we had uh, younger members from the district. And it's really cool to see the entire district involved in a production. I think theater is one of the, the few areas that we really need to focus on. Uh, it's a dying art form in schools. You know, there's so much emphasis on, you know, math and science as there should be, but you're losing that ability to learn who you are by pretending to be somebody else, to be a part of a production, to be a part of a family. And I, I just wanted to point out that uh, that those skills that you picked up, they're going to be with you for the rest of your life. Uh, the friendships, some of the best times that you, you're ever going to have, you're going to look fondly on it. Uh, you know, when in theory you're sitting up here, <laughs> and uh, and you're going to be looking back at it, saying, you know, that was that was one of the best moments of my life. And to the parents, thank you so much for you know driving the kids back and forth and, and being active, selling tickets, painting sets. Uh, you know, my poor parents, I remember them having to to paint set pieces back in the day, and. Uh, they're, they're not great painters. They're not great painters. So if you looked closely at certain set pieces, uh, you know, you'd see a lot of bleed through and uh, it, it wouldn't look that great. But uh, it, it, it's excellent. And if you, want, if you want to take this as a career, so there's a lot of great singers uh, in, in, in that cast, uh, I would just like to point out that uh, back in the 90s, we had a star in, in Lanford Theater Productions. His name was Segi Ishu. Uh, he led, uh, he was the lead in, uh, uh, he sung Some, Some Enchanted Evening, uh, and he is actually now a part of uh, Straight No Chaser, which is a Grammy-nominated group. And he's touring across the country, and so he got his start right in Lanfair. Uh He was on that same stage that you were in the same dressing room, probably playing as loud of music as you were when you were getting ready. So remember that there, there's, it, and it, it could be a career in theater, or it, it, it could be politics. It could just be you're good at interviewing, and you're good at making connections in life because you picked up those skills. But value it, and you know what? If you still got some time, enjoy every minute of the next year and the year after and the year after that because it goes really, really quickly. And on a personal note, my wife and I, we met in a theater class in college, so go to the next level, everybody. <laughs> that, that's it, Your Honor. Yeah, it's easy for you to say. I played Simple Simon in school. <laughs> Anybody else? Your Honor, mm. I am a former president of the Lanthier Thespian Club. Right. <laughs> I did eight shows at Lanphier, and I went to college to become a musical theater performance major and realized 
holy cow, I don't have what it takes to get a Hollywood job. But I still love the theater. I auditioned for shows all through college and took whatever roles I could get. What they say, there's no small roles, only small actors. So don't be afraid to take small parts in community theaters. Um, even when I went to law school, I still auditioned for shows. I remember my law professor saying, Brian, why are you reading that music? You need to be studying for your you know, contracts law exam. But I always found that the arts were always the perfect balance for the rest of life. <laughs> and so I, I think you guys already discovered that, but keep up the passion, like what Councilman Bliss said, whether you don't have to go and become an actor in Broadway, you can use the arts in any walk of life, whether you're a businessman or a politician, like Mark and I, um, or a gardener. I mean, there, there's, <laughs> there's so many great ways that the arts can enhance your lives, and you've already figured that out. So bravo. We're, the community is so proud of you. Every song, every line, we know that takes months of blocking and months of rehearsal, and it's, I know it's so bittersweet, the last performance, and you strike the set, and it just all the hard work evaporates. But it doesn't. Those memories that Mark talk, talks about will last a lifetime, and that that discipline you learn will apply to any type of curriculum you seek, whether it's theater or law or medicine. So, bravo, you guys are really sharp. Congratulations. Thank you. Anybody else, please? <laughs> Anybody else? Mr. Mayor, yes. I probably so, should so, thank so. my husband, Jack, what? if I wanted to maintain peace at home. Right. Very good. Very but nice. it was yeah. really nice. He used his woodworking tools and his painting skills, and I know he enjoyed every minute of it, no matter what you say. I know you did. <laughs> but thank you, Vicki, too. And anybody else I forgot, I'm sorry, but thank you for all being a part of this. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? All right, thank you for your comments, and thanks for being here again. Congratulations. Thank you. And moving on, uh, approval of the agenda. Are there <laughs> any additions or deletions? Yes, Mr. Mayor, Please, uh -huh. I would like to suggest an addition. Um, I had a lovely lady visit me yesterday, and she made a really nice donation to the Historical Commission, and I would like to have her show her donation and acknowledge her contribution, because it's very appropriate for the 60th anniversary, um, being that it was probably photographed around the time that we started as a city. and. Um, and I would like to uh, have permission for her to come up and present that. Make an emotion. Her name Correct. is Joyce Kasika, Kasika, Kasika Work. Kasika Work. Okay. So yeah. I am making that as a motion. Thank you. Need a second? Mr. Mayor? Mr. Uh, support. Hold, hold okay. Discussion? All in favor, aye. Please. Aye. 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 Yes. Okay. okay. And I also would like to. When Joyce comes up here, she, I told her she could say anything that she wants, so she says no, but <laughs> she's from Tennessee, so she will be going back home next oh, week. Okay. But I also wanted to acknowledge Andy McGilvery, who is in the front row, and he can come up and hold the map. Um, Andy was named our Historian of the Year for 2015 at the Roundtable Banquet. So thank you, Andy, for all you do. Thank you. Do you want to step? Yeah. Do you want to step up to the microphones? So everybody can hear you, if you don't mind. <coughs> What year did you uh, leave Madison Hayes? Yeah, if you could. Yeah, I know it's. Uh, we actually moved into Madison Heights. It was Royal Oak Township at the time, 1955. Uh huh. My brother's first uh, day of school at James Monroe 
was on Valentine's Day, 1955. 1955. I didn't start kindergarten until that fall of 55 because I was younger. Um, at that time, it was, uh, of course, like I said, Roll Oak Township, and um, my parents' mortgage was $75 a month. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, you know, my heart will always be in Madison Heights. I graduated Madison in 68. Good. My brother, 65. Um, a cousin of mine, Alvo Frazier, was on the school board back in the day. So I, okay. you know, have ties with family there. And, yeah. Uh, I come back every chance I get. Good. Well, welcome and thank you very much. This is a treasure, really, well, uh, for when us. I, when I went through, <clears throat> I'm still going through my parents' stuff because they passed away in 04 and 05. Uh huh. And when I found that and met Marjean on Facebook, I had kind of taken some pictures and sent it to her, and she said, we don't have anything like that. So I said, when I come up, I'll bring them with yeah. me. And, uh, she said, they're great. And I'm glad that somebody else is going to be able oh, we're gonna to enjoy view them. these and enjoy them. Yeah. So I'm proud to be able to bring them. Your Thank Honor, you. Yes, sir. Before you fold them up, could Councilwoman Scott point out some of the landmarks there? I think I recognize Halfman and Monroe Elementary. Okay, yeah. Comments? <clears throat> yeah. Now, at the time those pictures were taken, Stevenson Highway was a double highway coming into Madison Heights. Uh, Dequinder North of 14 was gravel. Uh, Dequinder was a two lane road, 11 mile was two lane, 10 mile. Yeah, we've seen a lot of changes. Hey, thank you very much. That's very I'm nice of you to do that. Thank you very much. Thanks, same to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Moving on, business licenses initial. We have two applicants. Hearthside Heating. It's a heating, ventilation, and air conditioning shop. at 30207 John R. The second one is CSC Community Social Consultants. And these are consultants for Social Security Administration and Welfare. 27304 John R. And we have a temporary and seasonal, which is K&D Fashion Superstore Outdoor Sales, 32080 John R. And all of the businesses have met the requirements of the city. So can we have a motion on this, please? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Clark. I'd make a motion to approve initial business license applications. Uh, number one, to operate Hearthside Heating Incorporated, a heating ventilating and air conditioning shop. That is a change of ownership. Number two, uh, community social consultants, consultants for Social Security Administration and Welfare. That's also a change of ownership. No, this is a 
change of location. Yeah. Uh, business license temporary and seasonal to operate an outdoor sale of men's clothing, shoes, and accessories at 32080 John R. Road, that is K and G Fashion Superstore. Oh, good. Thank you. We need a second, please. Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Scott. Second. Discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Business licenses, non commercial, or nothing. Public hearings, nothing scheduled for this evening. Reports on agenda of interest to parties in the audience. Okay, how about meeting open to the public? Please, uh huh. Name and address, if you will, please. I'm Gloria Moore, 27368 Dartmouth. Uh, Friends of the Madison Heights area senior citizens is having a new officers meeting at the library at 7 p.m. June 16th. The, uh, a afterwards, there's going to be coffee at Leo's. Oh. Everyone is welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else wish to address council? Name and address, if you will, sir. Uh, Jim Capizzo, 863 Benoit. As, as you may know, uh, when the Republicans took control of both houses last November, uh, uh, they're moving forward with the Trans-Pacific Partnership. The president's all for these kind of NAFTA kind of treaties. Um, so I have something from Robert Reich here. Uh, in fact, he calls it, in fact, it's just more trickle-down economics. The biggest beneficiaries would be giant-based American global corporations along with their executives and major shareholders. Those giant corporations initiated the deal in the first place. Their lobbyists helped craft it behind closed doors and they're the ones who have been pushing hard for it in the Congress. From the Center for Food Safety last uh, Monday on May 18th, the World Trade Organization issued a final ruling against the U.S. country of origin labeling policy that allows American consumers to know where their meat is born, raised, and slaughtered. So if the Trans-Pacific Partnership passes, we'll be getting more attacks on our domestic legislation. And again, from the Center for food safety, what's been leaked about it so far, it's being done in secret, it's, our senators have to go into a room with no aides, they can't write anything down to even look at it. What's been leaked so far is that the Trans-Pacific Partnership would offshore millions of American jobs, expose the U.S. to imports of unsafe food, and empower corporations to attack hard-fought U.S. environmental and health safeguards. So, is that it? Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Okay, let's go to item C, communications. And we have one application. It's a club, Cubs uh, Scout Pack, 1587 Civic Center Park, fee waiver. Cub Scout Pack 1587 has requested permission to use Civic Center Park and Pavilion C for their annual family picnic and year-end awards ceremony on Friday, June 5th, 2015 at 6 p.m. The group has also requested a waiver of the pavilion rental and damage deposit fees. Staff and I recommend the council approve the requested use of the park and pavilion C, subject to compliance with the council's policy on uniform insurance requirements for special events. What's the wish of council, please? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Clark. I make a motion to approve the requested use of the park and pavilion C, subject to compliance with the council's policy on uniform insurance requirements for special events and also a waiver of the pavilion rental and damage deposit fees. Thank you, sir. Second? Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Scott. Second. Discussion? Is this your group, Margie? Fifth, well, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Item D, reports, nothing. Item E, likewise, items for future public hearings, nothing is scheduled. Item F, we do bid awards and purchases, and they have a purchasing coordinator, Amy Mizak, and this is for a DPS tandem axle truck. The adopted fiscal year 2016 budget includes a scheduled replacement of our tandem dump truck number uh, 417, funded through the proposal, proposal V millage. 
The new vehicle 417 will include a tandem axle chassis with a 13-foot dump box, an 11-foot front plow, an 11-foot underbody scraper, a 7-foot wing plow, salt spreader, brine tank, and safety lighting. Staff and I recommend that Council approve the purchase of the tandem axle, a tandem axle dump truck from the lowest responsible bidders under the City of Rochester Hills Mitten Cooperative Bid, and those are Wolverine Freightliner at $97,892 for the chassis and truck and trailer specialties at $101,193 for the body and other items for a total cost of $199,085. Funds are budgeted and available for this purchase in the fiscal year 2016 adopted budget. Uh, delivery and payment will occur after July 1st and the reason that we're bringing this to you now uh, instead of after July 1st is because there's a four to eight month build time and the department would very much like to have this vehicle in season uh, by this winter. Good. Thank you. What's the wish of council on this? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Clark. I'd make a motion to approve the purchase of a tandem axle dump truck from the lowest responsible bidders under the City of Rochester Hills MITM Cooperative Bid Wolverine Freightliner at $97,892 for the chassis and truck and trailer specialties at $1,001 and $193, $101,193 for the body and other items for a total cost of $199,085. Thank you, sir. Second. Your Mr. Honor. Mayor. Mr. Hartwell. I support. Thank you, sir. Discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Next item on the agenda is the ordinance and nothing is scheduled. So could we have approval of the minutes of the last regular council meeting on May 11th? Your Honor. Mr. Bliss. I move that we adopt the minutes of the regular council meeting of May 11, 2015 as printed. Thank you, sir. Second? Your Honor. Mr. Harwell. Thank you. I support. Discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Unfinished business. Nothing is scheduled for this evening. And we do have uh, some requests for appointments, and this is one is the uh, Brownfield Redevelopment Authority, and it's a downtown development authority, and this is a mayor's appointment in Ruth uh, Charleboy. Her term expires 619, and she's willing to uh, serve again. So it would be from 619 to 2019. So what, can we have a motion on this? Mr. Mayor? Yes. Um, I'm willing to bring that forward to the council for consideration. Thank you. It's because it's a mayor's appointment. Second. Mr. Yeah. Mayor? Yes. Thank you. I support... Thank you. All right. I would like to nominate Ruth Charlebois for a term expiring on, I'm sorry, her term expires in June of this year on um, 19th, and she wanted a four-year seat, and that will be on the Brownfield Real Redevelopment Authority, Downtown Development Authority. Right. Agreeable? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll say, okay. Oh, yes, yeah. so I, all I, right, su good. I, I support yeah. Okay, discussion? If all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? I think the next one I have is Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. And this is Robert Borngesser, and his term expired uh, the 15th of 2015. This is a two-year term that would go to April 15th, 2017. And I would be happy to have somebody make a, a, a nomination on him, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Clark. I'd make a motion to reappoint Robert Borngesser to the term expired 2015 this is a two-year term, so this will expire in 2017. Thank you, sir. Second? Your Honor? Yes, sir. I support if the motion was to confirm the mayor's appointment. Yes. 
I no. support that motion. Okay. Discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 And opposed? Executive <laughs> session. Nothing is scheduled for this evening. Does anybody have any other appointments on boards <laughs> and commissions? <clears throat> okay, then. Uh, we can go into closing comments then, I think. And uh, we'll start with Councilman Mark Pliss, if you would, sir. Uh, thanks, Your Honor. Um, I, I'd once again like to congratulate the Lanford Drama Club. Uh, I'm actually a little disappointed that we didn't get to hear a musical number tonight. There, there were enough students. Uh, you know, I, I know Mayor Pro Tem Hartwell and I w would have done it back in the day, certainly. <laughs> uh, it's really cool to, to see that theater program continue to, to thrive and prosper. There, there, was, a, there was a time when uh, Mr. Uh, Ensley retired that uh, nobody knew if it would continue. And there's, there's been a lot of people who've helped it along the way. And it's really great to see uh, Rick and Judy Lewis uh, kind of take the ball and run with that. It gives former Lanford thespians like us a chance to, to reminisce. Uh, the only thing that I would ask of those students is not to pull the yearbook. <laughs> don't, yeah, don't pull the yearbooks in the library. You don't need to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> um, on a more serious note, uh, I, I'd like to concur with something that uh, Mayor Pro Tem Harwell brought up. Uh, not too long ago, and that the the outdoor sale agenda item, I, I personally believe that that's outdated uh, to have it come before council. Uh, like K and G, for example, they've done that outdoor sale now for uh, gosh, at, at least five years, if not a decade. And so, <clears throat> I, I think having some sort of administrative way of approving that uh, would be excellent. So I'd like to throw my support behind that. Conversely. I think we need to be talking about fireworks. Uh, I, I think we need to potentially uh, pass a, a resolution or, or, or an ordinance to uh, shut down fireworks after 11 a.m. and penalize people who are violating that, and then have all professional displays get approval from council. Uh, that's something that I'd like to see. I, I, I think any time that fireworks go off, uh, particularly the young families in our city, uh, they have a difficult time. And, you know, by law, uh, other than professional displays, it's typically the day before, the day of, and the day after a holiday. Uh, but the laws, to my knowledge, give local municipalities the ability to you know, c kind, of, kind of limit uh, within their own city. Uh, we have very small areas that we can, uh, but I'd like to see a little bit of analysis on ways that we can limit uh, firework usage in our city, and uh, you know, any option might be a, uh, worth discussing, in my opinion. Uh, that's it, Your Honor. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Harwell, uh, The old chestnut of regulating fireworks. I mean, <laughs> it is the season where you just want to pull your hair out. Mm -hmm. God bless America, Your Honor, but some of the people that fire fireworks in my neighborhood are doing it just because they're drunk. So I, I know state law really shackles what municipalities can do, but I, maybe let's take another look. If there's anything else the city can do to enhance the regulations and penalties, or at the very least, let's send a sternly written letter to our legislators to change the law. But on that note, you know, we're actually a really blessed city uh, to have a private organization sponsor a Memorial Day parade, and I know you know, we could thank 100 people, but I know Councilwoman Scott has a big hand in that where she gives the play-by-play -play on TV. Uh, there's some other people here. I know Joe Vitale from DPS, but Andy McGillivray. I, I, Martha Kehoe. Even Jack Scott, Martha Kehoe. I, I'm just naming faces I can see in the room. But I know the Intermediate <coughs> Women's Club lends hours of sport, probably hundreds of hours of sport throughout the year to keep, to keep the tribute to our fallen service members alive and in our hearts and so it, it's with deep reverence that we honor our service members and I it's just fantastic that we're able to pause and your speech was fantastic mayor just to, to remind people of why we're here and the importance of the holiday uh, that's all just thanks to all around it's, it's a great you. tribute mr. chairman nothing this evening mr. mayor thank mr. you Mayors? Uh, no sir nothing tonight city clerk okay. rich Clark Oh, just one thing, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to thank the uh, police reserve and the Explorer Scouts for donating, donating their time to work the parade. They work out there for nothing, 
and where they could be home spending time with their family. That's all, Mr. Mayor. Councilwoman Scott? Yes, Mr. Mayor. I Sur am going to talk. Surprising. <laughs> yeah. Um, in regards to the parade, I too want to um, reiterate how much work goes into that parade behind the scenes. I know one of the hardest workers here is Andy McGilvery, um, who works year round, but he just doesn't let remind you about it all the time. But he's very effective, and Martha Kehoe kind of runs the show, and Andy says, yes, Martha. <laughs> and he follows directions very well and really organizes it and helps her. Uh, so many other people. And I want to thank the Van Sice family who were the Grand Marshals, and that was in memory of their mother and their father, by the way, who was a council person here <coughs> in Madison Heights. I'm sorry. And, oh well, yes. And I would like to thank my new commentator, Jeff Gerald, who did a great job. Did he? Yeah. I hope he comes back every year. He did great. And speaking of Gerald's, um, his sister, Lori Gerald, has organized a special event, and she wants to do it throughout the summer. So I'm going to tell you about it. It's You can join if you wish, but the opportunity will be available to help our city. She's going to call it Mad Mondays. And M-A-D stands for Making a Difference. It also stands for Madison Heights, but we are going to organize several groups. Whoever is interested can come by between the hours of 6.30 and 8 on Mondays, one Monday a month. And this year, or this year it will be in June the 2nd, which is the first Monday of the month. And people will just clean up the park. They're going to Rosie's Park for the first one. People can bring their rakes, their flowers to plant, anything that they want to touch up. For instance, if there's play now equipment that they wish to repair, or spray cleaners and rags, bring that with you and you all get together and help beautify our park. Um, this, as I told you, will be on June the 2nd. And also you can bring a snack so that after you're done with your cleaning up, you can celebrate your efforts. It's also co-sponsored by the GFWC, Madison Heights Intermediate Women's Project, and we thank everybody for being involved. So that's June the 2nd, Monday, from 6.30 to 8, just show up at Rosie's Park. The DPS is gonna provide bags and come by later to pick out the trash and the branches and help in any other ways if possible. So we wanna thank you for them, for their participation. Your, um, Your Honor. Yeah. Councilwoman, June the 2nd is a Tuesday. Did you mean, you mean to say the Tuesday? I'm sorry, June it must be June the 1st. It's the first Monday of the month. Yeah, so that would be that would be June 1st. Okay, I'm sorry, June 1st. And is, that's, that's a, a.m. or p.m.? 6.30 p.m., 6 .30 PM. PM. yes, to 8 p.m., yes, definitely. Um, and our last trivia question, the question was, what building was constructed on its original location on John R in 1924 that later became Wilkinson Junior High School. And you had some to pick from, Madison High School, Kendall School, Lamphere High School, or Madison Heights Library. The answer is the first one, A, Madison High School. That was built in 1924, and then it was later turned into Wilkinson. And uh, unfortunately, then it was later torn down. We have a new question for this week, and I picked it because it's very appropriate to the donation that Joyce gave us today, and we pointed it out to you, so hopefully if you are paying attention. The question is, who in the early 1900s laid a trail from Detroit to Square Lake Road, which became a road that led to the growth of the Madison Heights area? And your choices are A, John R. Williams, B, Oswald de Quinder, C, Augustus Woodward, or D, Burnett Fretchett Stevenson. So you can review those answers, and I hope if you're listening, you'll get the right answer. That's all, Mr. Mayor. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilman Soltis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, too, want to echo everyone else's sentiments that the <laughs> parade was an excellent time, or fun time. Uh, Martha and everyone did a splendid job, as always. Uh, I really enjoy passing out the candy to all the kids. Uh, they always get a kick out of it. Some even the adults were trying to grab some of the candy, but that's okay. Um, I, I think the closing ceremony that, that honor our veterans, fallen veterans, was spectacular as always. Um, 
it's very such an emotional time, uh, and I thought it was wonderful. I want to reiterate that we're doing a senior trip again to Lansing this year um, for Older Michiganians Day. It's Tuesday, June 2nd, and we'll meet at the Senior Center about 8.30, probably take off about 9. And all seniors are welcome. It's free. Uh, we get a free lunch, you get a free trip, bus, uh, bus ride, and then we get to meet legislators. And uh, they will be speaking. There's thousands of advocates and seniors there on the, on the Capitol lawn. And then we go up to the uh, House Gallery and they introduce us. So it's, it's a wonderful time. It really is. Uh, I think we can probably get about like 28 signed up right now, but more the merrier. We'll make room. Um, third, I went to um, Birmingham Republican Women's Club last week and in a, bar, uh, in a part, nonpartisan spirit. And very hostess guests. And they, I wanted to see a gentleman speak. He started an organization called Zero Day US, and it's an organization that's dedicated to helping veterans uh, acclimate into society uh, after experiencing all the trauma, war, and, and the things that they've went through. And uh, they give job training, they do housing help, they do counseling. Uh, um, so it was worthwhile going. It was a spectacular. Um, organization and, and I'm really happy to hear about it um, you know I was talking to him somehow I'd like to, us to get involved some way you know uh, we were talking about Habitat of Humanity it would be great to have them build one of the houses in Madison <coughs> Heights with so a senior can get inside uh, with you know the, it's it will be built to accommodate maybe some type of um, disability um, and so that you know that's something that I, I'd like to uh, we'll try to to get that rolling. Uh, that's all, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. I'd like to reiterate the thank yous for the parade committee. They did a fantastic job. I did miss choir this year, uh, and there wasn't any there, I don't think, but they weren't able to come, apparently. But it was a fantastic parade. It was very nice. And I was very uh, proud of the council people because they followed me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But it was very nice. Thanks to the whole parade committee. Thanks for everybody for coming out. It was very nice. So with that, any comments from the audience? If not, then let's adjourn, please. <laughs>